Hi friends, it's Katie Steinberg here with you. Uh, better late than never, I guess, with uh, this week's message from Missing Peace where we did forest bathing together. So I'll tell you a little bit more about that in just a moment. I want you to know that this week coming up, this Sunday, just two days from now, we'll be meeting at the Bailey River Bridge, which is the corner of Granada and Beach, and we will be uh, juggling together, which is a lovely metaphor, uh, as you can probably already guess. And then the next week after that, we'll be at the Bailey House again doing Bible 101, uh, kind of looking at a broad take on this series of stories of people's experiences of God that are compiled in a library um, that is held as sacred in the Christian tradition. So all of that to look forward to, and you're invited to all of it. But without further to do, here is this week's message from Missing Peace. So you showed up for forest bathing. Good for you. I'm guessing many of you weren't sure what you were in for, but have come to expect a certain level of unique but meaningful experiences from Missing Peace. So here you are. Well, I think you'll be pleased to know that forest bathing, or shirin-yoku, is a well-documented Japanese healing practice, achieving calming, rejuvenating, and restorative benefits. Just by spending time amongst the plant life and the organic compounds it gives off, your immune system is strengthened, stress is reduced, recovery from surgery or disease is sped up, energy and intuition are increased, and overall happiness is increased also. Part of what Missing Peace hopes to be for you is a divinely inspired brake pedal, creating space for all these things and more. I once met with a group of teenagers back in my youth leader days, and they were talking about all the stresses of school and life and work and the future. And my advice to them was, the whole world will help you press your gas pedal. Find people who will help you press your brake. It's just not a highly praised virtue to take care of yourself, to slow down. Sure, self-care is a popular catchphrase right now, mostly one shrouded in shame-filled shoulds. But in reality, it's treated like another to-do, piled on top of already busy lives. Yes, take care of yourself, but don't do it on company time, or take away from family time, or from your eight hours of sleep, or from meal times. You need to get those right too. Forget it. I don't even have time for self-care, hardly time for any kind of care. You've likely heard the parable of the professor who gets up in front of her class and shows them a vase with a series of different sized rocks. She names the rock piles according to size and importance of what they represent. So the largest rocks are the most important things and the smallest are the least important things. And the vase is you. She then proceeds to add all the littlest rocks, then up the chain to the largest, but the vase overflows long before everything fits in. She repeats the experiment, putting in the largest things first, and then the smaller things filter in around them, effectively creating more space where there seemed to be none. So what will you make your most important things? What will be those largest rocks that you'll put in your vase first and allow the other lesser items to filter in around? Look, I'm a big fan of productivity, efficiency, and the external praise that comes with it. In fact, I've been known to get in a funk toward the end of a vacation or time off because of how horribly inefficient and unproductive vacation time is. Do you hear how ridiculous that is? We've become a society of people who can't appreciate or enjoy time off because we are addicted to the on. We talk about missing peace being set apart time, holy time, sacred time, and we refuse to make it efficient and productive. Because the truth is, 
life and love and hope and peace and relationship. All the most important things are not efficient or productive. We often reference the ancient radical rabbi who desired to reorder how people lived and thought about the world and what's important, who said that people the world counted as least may just matter most, who said that God might just be more gracious and generous than we ever imagined, even maybe especially to those who don't deserve it, who wasn't afraid of or disgusted by the poor and sick and lonely, and who is documented repeatedly for taking time to go away by himself and pray. Now, we don't get to know what those prayers looked or sounded like. We know the example recounted in the Lord's Prayer, but when he was alone, often up on the mountain, out in nature, off away from the world and the busyness and all the people greedily gobbling up every bit of time and energy he would let them. But my hunch is some of those prayers weren't about saying certain words or kneeling or even thinking at all, but were instead about stopping and listening and soaking up his divine parent's love expressed in the beauty of nature and a quiet feeling of goodness that we all realize is all around us when we take a little time to be unproductive and inefficient, away from the greedily gobble us up world. Self-care, discipleship, whatever you wanna call it, May it be one of your big rocks, one of the things you make sure gets into the vessel that is you and will surprise you by making your vessel able to do more and better and give you clarity and peace beyond your imagination. Amen. I hope that you'll find some time for yourself out in nature, uh, communing with it, both for the health and uh, stress-related benefits, but also just to be your brake pedal. We don't have to hit the gas all the time. If you'd like to join us in the flesh, you are, of course, invited. This week we'll be in Ormond Beach at uh, the corner of the Granada Bridge and Beach Street for some juggling. And then uh, we'll also be there the next week doing Bible 101, which is the broad look at an ancient collection of stories uh, about God. And I invite you to follow us on our social media. That's Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. You can follow us in all of those places. Or if you'd like to get our weekly text alert, you can text PEACE to 33222. I hope it is a beautiful day for you and that you find some time to slow down. Grace and peace, my friends.